Mm. Our very warm greetings to you in the precious name of Jesus. It is our great joy to come to you again, um, live stream of the Bible study interactive of God's Mercy's Tabernacle uh, that we have here at the Milele Hotel, second floor. And we are grateful to God for this first Wednesday when we are talking about the book of Corinthians in the month of July, the cold month, the month that we call winter in Kenya. And uh, we desire that through God's word, your life will be warmed up and fired up by the Spirit because the word of God is not only a hammer, it is not only like water that washes you, it is not only like soap that cleans you up, but it is also like a fire that burns away chaff, sin and iniquity in your life that burns away the fallen nature, that makes you refined until you are like pure gold that is shining and that has the purity of the gold that everyone is looking for in terms of its value. Today, gold is famously known to be the most stable uh, investment you can make because the price has always remained well above $1,000 per gram and therefore we want to be able to be used of God as vessels used of God as um, noble uh, tools to be able to bring forth God's word to you in a way that it will be digested in your inner spirit and it will be assimilated into your body and it will add value in terms of nutrients spiritually and it will be like going to a workout in the gym because you come out stronger with bigger spiritual mu muscles and with a well-toned spiritual body. I hope that uh, is your desire from interacting with the Word of God under the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. So today, uh, 6th of July, 2022, we believe God is going to help us even beyond that, to get more understanding about how to approach matters like the coming elections that are being held in our country. And we believe even in your own nation, you'll be able to have, to have better equip, equipping knowledge, better training, better understanding of God's word to apply yourself in that nation where you are. We sometimes have people from the U.S., from Canada, from Israel from India watching what we are ministering here on this live stream and we welcome you or maybe even from a different nation this I believe will equip you for where you are as the Lord enables us and uh, in all humility we acknowledge that we can do nothing except Christ by his spirit work through us and by his anointing teach us um, the soundness of the scriptures that we may understand properly Last uh, Wednesday that we were here, we were able to start the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians or the epistle of the Corinthians, chapter 4, where we were learning that uh, the secrets of God are revealed to the apostles of the New Testament. And we went lengthily or deeply into understanding how even people who just fear God and have no positions in the church can to access that which we would classify as the secrets of the heart of God. But we also said it is important to note that God has revealed certain things to certain gifts, certain offices, and be able to benefit from that. And we went ahead to express a little more about how the fivefold ministry works. And we went on to share about the motives, the motives of why we do what we do in terms of ministry being a very, very important factor when judgment day comes for the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, in earlier episodes, if you can see them in Jonathan Steve Mwangi, um, that is the YouTube channel where we have uploaded all the episodes previously. And this being our episode number 
us uh, 10. Uh, we believe you are going to be very, very blessed to be able to understand more and more about how God will weigh, will try, and will use even quote-unquote fire to test every ministry. And what burns in terms of hay or stubble or timber, it is a sign to show what you are doing, even though it looks successful in this life, was actually useless as far as how heaven looks at issues is concerned. What remained as stone, silver, or gold would prove that that was what God had intended for that ministry to accomplish. So therefore, may the Lord help us all, whether in ministry or in just service as a child of God, we do not do something that will burn up quickly and be forgotten quickly. We want to do something that is durable, long-lasting, that can weather the storms of life, that can be able to make God smile at the, on that day so that when we get to that day, uh, which is capital D, the day of the Lord, what is referred to as the Bema judgment seat of Christ in the Greek um, uh, original word, where the, the Christians will be giving an account of what they were doing, we want to be able to come out as gold. That we did everything with the right why and with the right how, and therefore got the right results before God. So before we get into the next part, which is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 5 to 7, where we will major quite a bit about the revelation of the Bible itself, I want to ask that we start with a little bit of praise and worship uh, with our sister Janice, who's always been very faithful to serve God in this way since we began. And we ask that God would help us prepare our hearts to receive God's word. Remember this, spiritual things are spiritually designed. They require us to shape our hearts, prepare our hearts, put ourselves in a place where we can hear God very clearly. That's what we want to do through that little time of preparation. So Sister Janice, Karibu Sana, help us in this ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. Amen. I'm blessed to be here with each one of you. And I'm glad because I know that the Holy Spirit will visit us this day. Amen. Makofi, Makofi, even as we praise the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Inua bwana inua 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 bwana inua sababu yumwema inua 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 bwana inua sababu yumwema oh inua bwana inua 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 bwana inua sababu yumwema inua inua Sababu yumwema Pigia, 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 pigia Bwana makofi Sababu yumwema hey. Pigia, pigia, pigia Bwana makofi Sababu Oh, chezea bwana kidogo Chezea, chezea, chezea Chezea bwana, chezea Sababu yumwema Jesus, the name above all other names. Oh, Jesus, the name above all other names. We sing Jesus, Jesus, the name above all other names. Oh, none in the heavens, none in the earth. Around us, none in the heavens or in the earth, none all around us. We sing Jesus, the name above all other names. Oh, Jesus, the name above all other names. We sing Jesus. Oh, uh -huh. 
none in the heavens. None in the heavens. Hey, none, none in the earth. earth. None, none all around us is greater. Oh, none in the heavens. None in the, none heavens. In the earth. None, in the none earth. all around us. None all around us is greater. One more time. None in the heavens. In the earth. None all around us. None around us is greater than Him. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. None like you, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is none like you, Jesus, in all the earth. We give you praise, we give you glory. We worship you, Lord. We lift our voices before you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nimwa budu na ni mimi Kama si yo we we Nimwa budu na ni mimi Kama si yo si yo we we Hakuna hakuna mwingine Waku Wabudu, tuwa kusifu, tuwa kuinua, hakuna wakufananishwa na wewe bwana. There is none like you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift our voices to praise you and to worship you. For there is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none to be compared with you, Lord Jesus. This day we declare our everlasting love for you, Lord. We declare our reverence for you, Lord Jesus. We declare that our worship and our honor belongs to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Your name is lifted on high this day, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for yet an opportunity to sit and learn from your word, O God, from your minister. We pray, Lord Jesus, that this day you will grant us an open heaven, that we may receive a fresh outpouring of your anointing, and that your Holy Spirit may move in this place freely and do as he wills. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you grant grace to the minister of the word and that, Lord, the word will come, come forth powerfully and with authority from above. And I pray, Lord, for those of us who are sitting to listen here physically and those who are on live stream, that, Lord, you will open our ears and open our hearts and our minds that we may receive what you have set apart for us this day. Mm-hmm. I pray, Lord, even as we pray that you will listen and you will hearken to our cry and our prayer, mm-hmm. Lord, because we know that you are faithful 
you will listen and you will answer. And so, Lord, I dedicate this time uh, before you, Lord, that you may do as you will in this place this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for the opportunity to have spent a little time in just getting our hearts on focus to be able to get the teaching that we have here today. It's our sincere joy and prayer that um, our hearts are a little more focused. Um, these songs that we sing help us to remember and help us to activate our faith around the fact that in Christ Jesus nothing is impossible but at the same time also we are able to receive that encouragement when we are singing and when we are uh, lifting up the name of Jesus we get into that mode of understanding that he is the only one worthy to be lifted high to be lifted with the fruit of our lips to be exalted among men and when we do that effectively then it causes the rain of his presence to pour on our lives and then we begin to feel encouraged our faith starts coming back that we can face whatever we are facing in life with the help of the Lord and so we, we thank God so much that uh, you are able to join us please let us know uh, where you are viewing us from and also let us know how the message that we are ministering through this Bible study is being a blessing to you or in specific ways how it is helping your life be more enriched in God. Like I said earlier, we are still on the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and uh, I want to read what we covered last Wednesday and then go into the portion of scripture that I want to focus on today, which is a very important study for the purposes of understanding how God uh, has revealed himself to us yes, as humanity. First Corinthians 4.1 starts by saying, So then men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. And verse 2, now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. And he says in verse 3, I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. And we expressed there how the matter of how we judge a ministry is something that we have to approach very carefully because in the first place, many of us are not even qualified to make a judgment because we know very little about the things of God and therefore you would make an, a judgment in error. One of the things that was happening during that time was these people in the Corinthian church had been affected by the what you would call the teaching of Gnosticism, which is knowledge or enlightenment, which is higher than other people. And it was based on a teaching that uh, regarded Sophia or wisdom as being, from the Greek perspective, uh, a type of wisdom that is worldly, that is in our current understanding demonic, that is sensual, and that glorified the intellectual capacity of people and uh, made uh, apostles and the uh, prophets and all these ministers who were of those days be judged on the basis of eloquence and the basis of natural or worldly knowledge. But 
Apostle Paul was saying when it comes to true apostleship, true preaching, true teaching based on the word of God, only God can judge and only qualified people can be able who know the things of God well to give an assessment on a matter that would make um, <clears throat> biblical um, excellence as far as judging that matter is concerned. So verse 5, and which is the one we are going to start majoring on from verse 5 to verse 7, therefore judge nothing before the appointed time. There is an appointed time for matters to be judged. One, by God, but two, there is always the appointed time to be able to assess uh, matters, assess ministry, assess service. And until that time, the Bible is telling us here in verse 5, wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. He will expose the motives of men's hearts. And at that time, each will receive his praise from God. I don't know about you, but um, I prefer to know that I have praise from God than praise from men. Men's praise is very, very superficial. It is based on what they feel about you today that can change within seconds or within a day. And the very people who will say to you, wow, what an excellent person or excellent speech or excellent, ex excellent preaching or excellent this or the other can be the very ones who say to you the next day, crucify him, crucify him. And we don't want anything to do with him. And therefore, when you live for people's praise, I assure you that is a very superficial philosophy that you are living for. The applause of men changes with times and seasons. It is what matters to them at a specific time that makes them appreciate you or not appreciate you. It is so um, up and down like a roller coaster that you can never really please people all the time 24-7. <laughs> I can assure you what you did to please them yesterday and you do it today may not receive the same accolades. Men are very, very, very huh, fickle-minded in, in that sense of uh, understanding the context of what we live for in terms of the praise of people. Scripture puts it like this in other parts of the Bible, that the fear of men brings a snare. See, when you live for the praise of men, you will find yourself ensnared somewhere because their standards are never stable. They are never consistent. They are never faithful to a particular principle. Men change. Mm? This is why when it says in the scriptures, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever, that is something sure that you can actually depend on. That is something sure that as a standard that you can live for and be qualified about because it doesn't keep shifting and playing games of what we call shifting goalposts. Today you say this is how we should do things. Tomorrow you change and you say this is how you should do things. Hmm? Men make promises and sound like they are so serious about it and they even do strange things like Hakia mungu, mungu moja, hmm? God one. <laughs> they tell you like that and say, Utaona kesho vile nitakufanyia. And that tomorrow never comes. And people live on hoaxes and false promises and false oaths and false contracts. People are so, so deceptive like that. So such an unsure foundation to put your life on that you really, really cannot be a, a person who focuses on people's opinion or pleasure or accolades. Therefore, Apostle Paul is saying what? The Lord will reveal <laughs> every one of us what our motive was. Ooh, he'll expose it. See? He will expose the motives of men's hearts. Because the motives are what are making 
Uh, many churches be what they are today. If your motive was crowds, it will come out. And what I mean by that is crowds at the expense of holiness, which means let bora kanisa ijae ata kama ni mashetani wanaelekea jahanam wamejaza kanisa. One of the faithful members of the church one time was concerned about the numbers that we had in the church being too few and uh, he was praying about it and then one time the Lord answered him with a dream and in that dream hmm, uh, I was walking into the church to find quite a number of people had, had joined the church he was happy but he was concerned at the same time that the church was full of people with dreadlocks and uh, they were looking wild <laughs> And they had banners, you know, that were talking about their rights and their rebellions and all those kind of things. And they were dancing in the church and the church was wild and he was concerned and he was saying, no, this is not what we stand for. And when he saw me walking in and saw my face shocked at what was happening in the church, he understood immediately why Pastor Steve always says he's not about numbers. But he is about the quality that we are raising in the church. When he woke up from the dream, he prayed and said, Lord, <laughs> forget about numbers. Let us have people who are going to heaven. And from that day, he got delivered from that, so to speak, mentality. Jesus was not afraid huh, to be judged by people as one who is not successful in his ministry. In have many people <laughs> and he would feed them and give them the word of God. Shortly thereafter, he would tell the disciples, I know they were after me for the bread. <laughs> I know they wanted <laughs> what they can gain from me. I know they are just after signs. And if that's what you are looking for, even you disciples, and you would like to leave, there is the door. Please go ahead and leave. Jesus was not going to subject his, his mission to the opinions of men. Hallelujah. He was not going to submit to what men love, what men prefer. In fact, there is a scripture that says, Jesus never <laughs> committed himself to man because he knew the testimony of man that man is a liar. See? Man is a liar. Anybody who does ministry that is based on people and how they love your ministry or not, and particularly, let me say, there is a, a man known as pa Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback somewhere in America who has a big church and who is famously referred to as the one who brought the, the system of plea church is concerned by introducing what you would call um, surveys, opinion polls and, and opinion surveys about what would you like to see in the church. And people who are filling these uh, 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 churches, uh, most of them shallow walk with the Lord and have a very worldly perspective on things. And these are the people who would be filling surveys hmm, in the church and saying we want to see a more modern type of a band uh, that has the kind of fashion of this world, you know, that looks cool, that looks fashionable, that looks, you know, dances to the worldly ways so that it is, it's appealing to the people of the world. It's appealing to sinners to come and be able to have hmm? Hmm? Well, uh, an experience that is very much like their language. That way they'll be attracted. That way they'll be attracted. Well, you know, the, uh, the, the fruits of what that movement brought, it came, through, it came through books like The Purpose Driven Church or it came through uh, The Purpose Driven hmm, Person. It came through, through books like those that were written that focusing on pleasing the people who are in the church of Jesus Christ rather than pleasing the Holy Spirit who was given to us as the third person of the Godhead 
to help us know how to conduct worship, how to conduct service, how to conduct the Christian life. And he was given to walk along beside us. That is what the word koinonia means, fellowship with the one who is walking beside us. Hmm? And because we shifted the emphasis from spirit-led worship, spirit-led preaching, spirit-led dancing, spirit-led dressing, spirit-led communion, spirit-led services, and shifted them to popularity of human, humankind, what people love, what people enjoy, then what we have ended up with is what we call prosperity churches who base the success of ministry on the size of congregation, on the wealth of the congregation, on the wealth and financial status of the church, on how well paid the pastor is, on what kind of vehicle he drives, on what kind of family he has in terms of how nice they look. And so the emphasis shifted from Christ crucified and spirit-led worship to becoming something that pleases the people and ultimately pleases Ole Shaitani Wakimunya, a.k.a. Jachi and the devil. And it's very, very sad because majority went that direction, minority remained with the straight and narrow that Apostle Paul is talking about in the book of Corinthians here. I care very little what you judge me for. I care very little what you think of me. This is what a true man of God would have to do. You set aside people's judgment, opinions, feelings, hmm? In, and give God that space and say, Lord, am I pleasing you? Am I qualified by you? Am I having the right motive? Is my heart right with you? Am I searching my heart to check whether the Holy Spirit has access to see whether there is a dark thing that is driving me to do things the way I'm doing them? Am I treating people the way God would treat them? Am I and they are preaching the message without compromise to ensure that Christ is getting across what he wants to get across to the people and I am not blocking or hindering or delaying or minimizing what God wants to say to his people. This is an extremely important. And when you are in a ministry of that nature that has that kind of God's opinion holds sway fast, then you are very likely to end up in heaven in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> because it is not about men. And because man is fallen, you cannot trust man. Man has a nature that has uh, given access to demonic power. Demons are liars by nature. They, be, they make men liars also. And so you find uh, you can base your surveys on people and then when you try to do what they like and what they are pleased by, they have so shifted in the way they like to do things. Next survey they are writing, they cancel exactly what they had said before. And so you have to keep shifting with the needs of the people, shifting with the wants of the people, which can be changed with the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> I remember making a major decision based on somebody's opinion which I thought was wise at the time, hardly had a year passed, that person left the church. And I wondered now, why did I do that decision? <laughs> I thought it was wisdom. And I realized, mm -hmm. big mistake, Brother Steve. Don't go by people before, again. You wait on God. Save everything <laughs> on the pan or on the sieve of the word of God. And if it agrees with the word of God, yes, I can accept your, your decision or your advice or your opinion. If it is sieved by God's word, hallelujah, Amen. then I know this we can work together and we can go very far together. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Men will fail you. Men will you know, misuse you. Men will take advantage of you. 
and men will be very good to you and very close to you and very, very uh, uh, needing, needy of your help in life when they are in trouble and when they are in problems. Watch out when they become successful. 90% of the time, they will no longer be interested in you. Hmm? There is even a, a, a worldly person. Ah, well, he says he has a little Christian ethics here and there, but <laughs> wasn't very visible. But when he was doing well as a journalist and a main anchor for big, big television stations, he says that even MPs would be looking for him and, and, and ministers would be looking for him. Politicians would be looking for him. Rich people would be looking for him. People who value him for the work he does would be looking for him. And those days he could even, you know, say, uh, ignore your call because he's so needed. He's so appreciated. He's so valued. He's so important to people until he hit a problem in life and ended up with a case where he was a suspected murder. And all of a sudden, the calls stopped. And then even when he tried to look for those people that used to call him, they would not answer his calls. And then he realized the relationships were based on his perceived success. And he learned a huge lesson. <laughs> that those who were now showing him concern when he's in trouble were the only ones he could trust again. Hello, get a revelation. Don't be a people person. <laughs> Smile with everyone. Say hello to everyone. But really pray about who you should entrust your life to in terms of close friendship or intimate, confidential type relationship. You need to be very, very careful about that. And you, my fellow minister, learn this very important lesson. Today, they look like they are with you and giving you big tithes and big offerings and all that and send, giving you cars and buying you things. But let me assure you, don't let that get into your heart. <laughs> because when they dump you, it will hurt you so bad, you might go with them as they are going from you. <laughs> you have to learn, like Apostle Paul, to be a person who waits until the Lord reveals uh, the hidden darkness and expose the motives that were in men's hearts. Co-ministers that you might choose may not have the same values as you have. They have something they are seeing in you that they may take advantage of. Many times you have to be careful about that. Who you work with why you are working with, what you are working for. It has to be saved all by God's word, by the Holy Spirit, and by God's leading uh, as to whether that is the right thing to do at a particular time. Learn, learn on how to remain within the confines of the Spirit of God and the word of God. Hallelujah. Let those boundaries become so clear in your life that they will keep you from making major mistakes in life. Hmm? Verse 6 says this, and I'm reading here, and I'm going to get into my notes. It says that, hmm? Now, brothers, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos. What I am telling you, I'm applying to myself. I'm also applying to this brother who I have given permission to minister often in the church, that these principles will guide you. And so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Do not go beyond what is written. Do not go beyond what is written. <laughs> Strong warning from an apostle who visited the third heavens and who came back with that revelation to the earth and was given a messenger of the devil to stay in his body <laughs> and buffet him to keep him from the abundance of the revelations from becoming proud because the things he learned in heaven whoosh, would blow anybody's mind. 
And everyone would say, this must be a God to know all these things. But he remained humble, and this is what he's saying. Even me with my huge revelations from heaven, do not go beyond what is written. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A very important point. Why should you not go beyond what is written? He now says, then you will not take pride in one man over against another. Verse 7, for what makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? So Paul now says, this is what is the strength of every genuine minister. That you stay within the boundaries and the confines of the written word of God. No matter how much visions, dreams, and revelations you receive, you see them through the word. <laughs> and through the word, it will humble you because you are given the word free of charge. You have no credit to say, I wrote the word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so therefore, that is what keeps us on the straight or narrow. That is what helps us to be able to make sure our ambitions are put in check. Our desire to achieve certain things in ministry are put in check. The word, it humbles. The word, it puts a limit. Hallelujah. The word, it ensures you don't go beyond to a place where you are the only one <laughs> who has that knowledge. Because there's where men start to become proud and start to call themselves mightiest of the mightiest. <laughs> Because they have gone beyond the written, beyond the word. Hallelujah. And so now they have to say this one nobody else has. You see, <laughs> that is where selfish ambition begins to have its expression. Paul is saying, as much as you may have a lot of revelation and eloquence and all that, stay within the written word. Because when you stay there, you have nothing to boast about. You have nothing to be proud about. All of us become level. All of us are being made equal. All of us become, we rely on the word. We rely on the scriptures. We rely on only one root. <laughs> and so therefore, who are you who is saying there that, yeah, a minimum to mighty man of God. You are actually mighty in Swahili, meaning you are dead. You are useless. Without the word, you are nothing. <laughs> Guess what? Even Jesus, when he came into this world, he submitted to the confines of the written. And that is why he would say to the devil, when the devil is trying to approach him, he would say, it is written. Hallelujah. It is written. Praise the Lord. God gave us an unshakable foundation, a rooted foundation, one that does not shift and vary and, make, and become something that we can't trust because today it's this, tomorrow it's the other. He gave us a stable word, a founded word. He gave us enough understanding to help us in this earthly life to be prepared for the eternal life. Somebody say amen. Amen. See? Yes. So now, this portion of scripture gives us an understanding on how God assesses the performance of ministry. We are to apply caution when analyzing ministry because calling and assignments from God are spiritually designed and any judging of God's work must be focused on the motives of the minister and the fruit of what he produces in terms of the fruit of the spirit at the end. Hallelujah. I was invited by one of our members who is in our leadership uh, to minister in where he works. They have a fellowship there, and uh, he was, he's the current chair of that fellowship. And uh, when we went there, they wanted Holy Communion to be served. It, they had never done it before, and it so happened that when the chairman suggested, could I bring my pastor, uh, the committee was in agreement with that proposition. And so I went there, I was received very warmly, and uh, when I began to minister, something interesting was noted by several of the people. When we finished, several of, the, all of them said, wow, what a wonderful service. And of course, glory to God for that, that I did a good job as far as they are concerned. 
But two or three of them came and said, we now know why this brother is such an effective minister because we have heard from his spiritual father. And so they could tell the spiritual DNA that is working in this brother's life, they could now see where it is coming from. Therefore, they were making an assessment that the emphasis of this minister is what has made this brother end up being effective the way he is. They were making a judgment. They were making an assessment. And it was so clear to them that after all these years, when we now see where he's coming from, who is his main mentor or disciple, they could see where it is coming from. So this is the way judgment will come. People will see the fruit you are producing. Somebody say amen. amen. And recognize and tie the two things together. You cannot hide when you are a farmer, that you planted strawberries. Because strawberries will come out one day. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Avocados will come if you planted avocados. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. hmm? Grapefruits will come out if you planted grapefruits. God will be able to be vindicated as he says, Welcome thou good and faithful servant. Because the fruits of your ministry will show themselves so clearly. What the emphasis is. In the same same way, a family that you have raised well, they will say they are so much like their father or their mother. They are so much like the one who has been their guardian because your values trickle down. Your values are shown by word and deed and people follow that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Where they have submitted their lives, it will begin to be seen what is the emphasis of that ministry. Without you even saying it to anyone, they will see it in your congregation. They will see it in the ministry you do. They will see it in the transformation that is realized in the people who have been beneficiaries of that ministry. Their value systems will change. Their priorities in life will change. And then they will become deeply, deeply very different from what they used to be. Wild people become mild people. See? See? Huh? Unholy people start loving holiness. Angry people start to become hmm, more of a soft answer <laughs> than rather than a loud, wild, angry answer. You will begin to see changes in how they look at life, how they treat their family, how they treat their wives or husbands, how they treat their children or parents. You will start to see change. If it is God's seed, you will see transformation. There is no doubt about it. And at that point, you will care very little as a minister of the gospel what people have to say about you because the world can see the difference. Hallelujah. God will one day say to you, welcome thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy rest. The fruit of the Spirit is qualified in five, Galatians 5.22, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, it's peace, it's gentleness, it's patience, it's kindness, it's goodness. All these nine fruit are very nice ways to show that people have embraced a certain teaching. It will come out of them. <laughs> they will be gentler. They will be kinder. Hallelujah. <laughs> they will be more patient. Until it even sometimes it doesn't make sense. You will see them being able to handle things with wisdom. With self-control. And there are people who fear God. And there are people who have boundaries. And principles. And ethics. Hallelujah. <laughs> It will become so clear until it is so strong that when fire comes, eh, they pass the tests and they come out as gold. Hallelujah. It is very clear to me, this is a very important paragraph I have written, that greedy motives will cause people to compare and contrast each other's work and boast about each one's teaching each one's achievements and levels of faith or financial strength of their ministries. A lot of the battles we have between apostles now, 
Battles we have between bishops now. Battles, ministerial battles between pastors and congregational leaders of different kinds and cadres and, and categories is because they are weighing each other on the basis of worldly success. <laughs> see? They are weighing each other on achievements because their motives were selfish ambition motives. Motives prove why you argue with others. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why you compare yourself with others? I was just watching yesterday um, an apostle <laughs> from another country attacking one of our Kenyan apostles because he went around doing hmm, consecration of every county and in each prayer meeting he would pour oil on that county that had a bottle that is written the name of that county. And so this apostle is calling that one uh, that he's doing spiritual witchcraft. <laughs> and so that one is feeling, who is this foreign preacher <laughs> who is coming to attack what he doesn't even know? See? And this other one is saying, forget about my being a preacher. <laughs> go to the word. Go to the word. What you are doing with witchcraft. And, and so now it's, it is a battle of apostles. Battle of apostles. Hello. <laughs> Let me assure you, if we are not careful, we will find that our motives, when examined by the Lord and made brought to light, they will be wrong motives. Sizing one another, who has a bigger ministry, <laughs> who has a more prophetic uh, voice, or uh, uh, who has more authority, or who has, you know, those things, they will put us in a lot of trouble. Jesus was not bothered about what others were doing. In fact, when the disciples came, <laughs> when the disciples came, <laughs> they, they were telling Jesus, stop these people from casting out devils. Stop these ones from baptizing. <laughs> Jesus was saying to them, no, whoever is for us is not against us. Let them do what they are doing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If the, if the minister is coming to infiltrate your own church, that's a different story. Now that becomes personal. But if he's doing something out there, <laughs> oh, I say leave them alone. Let God judge. Don't judge before the time. Praise the Lord. Are we together, brethren? Hmm? It is sometimes a very clear sign that we are competing rather than doing what God called us when we are too bothered with the success of others. That is not what we were called for. We are supposed to remain focused on what God asked us to do. My little job to do, my little assignment to do, did I do it perfectly? Did I do it with the right motives? Did I do it with a genuine desire to please God, who will be the one I'll give an account to? And whether others are failing in theirs or not, succeeding in theirs or not, that's not the issue, is whether I have done mine. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's, that's a very safe place to be. This is where Apostle Paul is saying, hmm, I don't care, care so much what you think about me, but I am the one as a spiritual father, and we are going to come to that issue of being a spiritual father. Oh, that is going to be deep stuff. I pray that you will stay with us because it will be very helpful. But he has the authority. He has the authority as far as the Corinthian church is concerned to gauge and say here, you are going too far by trying to judge these preachers and me and comparing them like that. He has the right to do so because he started Corinthians. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, in life, we have many sought to speak fathers because of the way life is. You are born in a single mom's home. She doesn't have any male figure in her life, but you go to school uh, in the boarding school, there's a chaplain who somehow you connect with and he has such a strong impartation on your life as a father. You begin to say, this is my spiritual father. And it is very understandable. As you move on into the university, the Christian Union chairman is such a sober person. They have such a strong impact on your life. Or the CU mother is such a strong <laughs> impact on your life. You begin to say, this is a main voice in my life fully understood. 
you touch some YouTube video and you connect with a preacher who somehow you are just feeling this one resonates with me and you begin to say this is my mentor. I understand all that. However, there is one person who, as far as God is concerned, is your father. Hallelujah. <laughs> And you have to know, even if I listen to this and this and this and this, this one is my main voice. Hallelujah. You have to be able to know that because what will happen is you will end up having several split identities because of listening to too many people. Apostle Paul is trying to tell them, listen very carefully. I am the one who has the right of a father over your lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Here he says, Paul is warning us to remember that we received all that we have freely from the Lord, and hence we have no right to boast our, about our work. Huh? We have no right to boast about our work. We received freely. Let me say this, brethren. I got saved through free hearing of the gospel. A classmate of mine who was the chairman of the CU at the time, in the college that I was in Juja, he invited me to come and watch what was being shared freely by evangelist Reinhard Bonke, who is now passed away for the last, I think, two years. He passed away uh, about two or three years ago. He was preaching in Nairobi. The, the president at the time, the late president, Daniel Arap Moy, had given him free live coverage on KBC. And the Crusades had attracted hundreds and thousands of people. Uhuru Park, extending to Central Park, was actually full of people. By the time he finished his 10-day crusade period, about a million people had given their lives to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And I was watching on television. This is how, what inspired me, together with a free Bible I received from a friend in our neighborhood uh, who brought it during my birthday together with a cake. These two things helped me to come into salvation. But as I moved on, people who had stronger influence over my life, including the late apostle who helped me with the apostolic understanding, huh? I had to now decide who is my main voice. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> who is my what? <laughs> my main voice. And apart from the pastors who I was under, because of the way the church was large and it has an apostle and prophets and all that and church, many churches and we had to submit to one local church somewhere the lord revealed to me that my father was that apostle praise the lord mm -hmm. and i when i look at my ministry i see a lot about his dna flowing in my life and that has helped me to stay true to one kind of teaching because there are many people who have embraced several teachings that they don't have an identity that marks them as having one kind of teaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if there sounds all confused, today they believe in this, tomorrow they believe in the other, next day they believe in this, the other, they believe in the other, like that. And so eventually what they have hmm, uh, come up with is a total concoction. It is like what we call in Kikuyu Mashakura. You have boiled maize, bananas, avocado inside there. They some meat. There's a bit of spaghetti. There's a bit of minji. There's ngwashe. There's what? My God, by the time you finish eating that meal, you have to have a glass of ino next there to go and sort out the mix-up in the stomach. <laughs> oh, God, help us. Hmm? I always like to use this example. <laughs> Sorry to divert slightly, but this matter is very important because there are too many people church hopping from one ministry to the other, to the other, to the other, until, oh Lord, they are so, if we were to picture them in the spirit, they would look green here, blue here, orange here, <laughs> yellow there, and a bit of purple, magenta in the legs, and my Lord, it would be such a mix-up. Huh? I use this example of the late Fidel Odinga, the son of Raila Odinga. Uh, who is vying to be president soon. And the day he died, he died as a result of poisoning. And uh, <laughs> it was very sad uh, because, you know, it was a painful death, uh, foaming at the mouth and everything, and he died, collapsed in his bed like that. Very sad story. Nobody is happy about that. That was something very sad to happen, to lose his son like that. It was a very painful death. 
But when they started what is called government pathological uh, investigation to know what could have killed him, they discovered that in one night he was in 13 different entertainment joints. <laughs> Drink a little here, bite a little something there, eh? eat something here, Drink another one there, like that, one stop after another. And this is the habit of many people who have become established alcoholics. They love to go to one bar after another. And because they are looking for different atmospheres, different ki ty types of joy and experience, different women, different this, different the other, different kind of whiskey, different kind of nyamachoma, different kind of kachumbari, different this or the other, they, they can end up in one night being in so many places so now they had this problem of which one could have poisoned him. <laughs> and it was giving me a very nice analogy as far as this type of thing that we're discussing here is concerned. When you hit problems as a believer, a pastor who is trying to help you will have a huge problem of trying to understand where did you get messed up? Because you are Anglican and Presbyterian, Catholic and Lutheran, you have also been into, eh? <coughs> what do you call these guys who dance with Akilemba Hotel? Mukorino. <laughs> you have been in Salvation Army. You have been in Not Not Church of Israeli. You have also been in the Giriyama land with the churches that are there. So, be my God, by the time we try to figure out where did the problem come, it will take a lot of energy, time, money, investigation, sleepless nights. Oh, God, have mercy upon us. Sometimes it's better to deal with a Muslim who only knows Islam. <laughs> and then you want to help him come to Christ. This mixing up is becoming too much. People have too many identities. I understand sometimes it is because you are trying to look for the right place to settle. But in each place, there is so much influence of that place that you keep changing and morphing from this <laughs> into the other, into the other, until now we just don't know where to start. It's like when a cat has played with a knitting ball of wool and it has gone tied at this tool's edge here, it has gone to this other chair, it has gone under the sofa, it has gone, you don't even know where's the beginning, where's the end of the knitting ball. How do we help? <laughs> This is what I want to say, brethren. Seek the Lord until there is one Eli who shows you when you hear Samuel, Samuel, you know that that is God's voice. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> hmm? I like what Naomi said to Ruth. Now I have lost my husband and my two sons who were your husbands have died. I am left a bitter woman. In fact, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. I am bitter now. So what I'm going to do, I am going back to where I came from because this whole escapade we were trying to make greener life eh, in the America of our day has not worked. <laughs> so I want to go back, start from zero. I'm old of age now, can't produce children, can't raise for you another son to marry you, either of you. So what we do is, let, let me go back. You go back to your people and your gods let me go back to my God of Israel in the land of Bethel or Bethlehem, the house of bread. Maybe we even made a mistake to have left in the first place. And the, the first lady called Orpa <laughs> says to her, Okay, mommy, I'll miss you. <laughs> but I'm going back. So she went back to her gods, the Moabite gods. But this other one, Ruth, said, hmm, You know, mommy, I have observed your life. And even with all these tragedies around you, there is something so stable about you. You have one God who you are faithful to, regardless of what has happened. I have so many gods in my homeland. I get confused which one to worship on which day. I would like to follow you because I see something in you as bitter as you are. I see beyond your troubles to the God that is working in your life. So bid me not to depart or go. I will stay with you 
Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I'll be buried. <laughs> This girl, I tell you, when you look at the end of her life, married to a rich man called Boaz, giving birth to a child called Obed, who was the grandfather of David, the Goliath killer. Hallelujah. Then you say, man, the best thing is stick to one truth and stay with it till the end. Ooh, I like this kind of talk. I don't know about you. I pray it is blessing you like it's blessing me. Don't go beyond what is written. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is the word of God. It is clear that going beyond what is written is a major reason for why ministers become proud. Why ministers become proud. I like the fact that the man who raised me was a solid word of God man. The Bible that we know, it starts from Genesis in the Old Testament to Malachi, 39 books. And then it goes into the New Testament, starting with the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, <coughs> three of which are called the Synoptic Gospels. And then it continues to the book of Revelation, 27 books. This forms 66 books. That man raised me to understand that is the inspired word of God. And I saw for myself and got my own witness that what he's telling me is true. He was a strict man to follow the King James Version. I later started comparing King James with NIV and I found with those two, I will be successful in my life following God according to his word. Because the English of NIV was easier to understand. King James was very strictly following what is called hmm, the scrolls that were given at the time of King James, uh, who, who, who actually authorized for the people to put the Bible into one canon and actually treated it as the authorized Bible to be read in the churches. God inspired that whole process. And we have a book now that has come out as very, very clearly biblical. Later in life, when studying the tabernacle, I came to look at something very, very carefully and did my own research, and I found out that what was called in the tabernacle as the golden lampstand, referred to in the Israel, Israeli language or the Hebrew language as the menorah, actually the original one that Moses had prepared by Bezalel and Oholiab had 66 little almonds on it. God willing, when we have mm, uh, more teaching on this subject, I'll show the pictures thereof that show that this golden lampstand was a picture of the Holy Spirit. And it was one that showed that mm, <clears throat> because it was made of one sheet of gold to make that beautiful little thing that had three prongs on each side and one main shaft making it have seven uh, 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 prongs at, at the top where there were little um, uh, um, lamp holders that had oil in them that had to have oil all the time for the flame to never die out so that there is lighting that is always there 24-7 inside the holy place where the priests would go. It was a symbol of the fact that by the one Holy Spirit, he inspired 40 authors to write 66 books are represented by those almonds. And by that, it was a complete picture because seven is the number of completion. And that became what is described in the Bible. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a guide unto my path. Those 66 books harmonize. Those 66 books are so in agreement. Those 66 books, Jesus quoted from the Old Testament from them. <laughs> in fact, would sometimes name and say, Moses wrote. <laughs> Christ gave us direction to know which is the inspired word of God. Peter quoted from the same Old Testament. Paul quoted from the same Old Testament. The whole of the book of Hebrews chapter 9 is actually the tabernacle 
Where did he learn that from? He was quoting from ordained, inspired Old Testament scriptures. Jesus gave examples of men like Daniel, men like Jonah. He compared himself to Jonah being in the fish for three days, which means Jonah is an inspired book. Hallelujah. Mm. Christ was very careful to say, which is the word that comes from me? And he made such distinction in Matthew 15. He said, you have followed your tradition and you have made the word of God of no effect. Meaning what? I am clear what my father wrote and I clear what you guys added. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. So Paul is coming to say like Jesus, do not go beyond what is written. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me say something here that's very, very powerful. My children and I, we love music quite a bit. And one of the things we like looking at is the mastery of a choir man over an orchestra. How he can just be pointing at this group of huh, violinists in this section. And he had, at the same time, the, Oh my Lord, that thing is something to watch. The skill which these people have. And each person looking at his piece of music is adding value to the one who is doing his, with his music, to the bassist, to the psalmist, to the this, uh, lead uh, guitarist, to the keyboardist, to the organist, to the who's. And everyone is bothering with their part. But the whole thing is harmonizing as one piece of music. Somebody say amen. amen. That is what the Holy Spirit did. Forty authors. Over 1,600 years, all writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And they come up with one piece of music that says, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the way, the truth, and the life. And without him, no man can see the Father. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 The tapestry of the music there is unique with each individual. But at the same time, is one with the whole thing. Hallelujah. Mm. This is what happened with this Bible. This is what Paul is saying. Stick to it. Don't shift. Don't move. Don't even go. The Bible says, don't change an iota, a jot or a tittle. Come on now. The commas are in the right place. The semicolons are in the right place. Hallelujah. <laughs> the full stops are in the right place. It is inspired. The canon of God's word. This is where we get revelation. The original revelation that takes us from beyond being people who can see that this beautiful sky has to have a designer. These clouds, the way they form, has to have someone who is at work behind it. These hills, the way they cascade and go up and down, and the way they look so beautiful, and connect with the water world, and see the lakes and the rivers, and you see the beautiful fish in them, different colors, different designs, different this, different the other. Some so huge, they could fill this room like a whale. Some so small, like a man. Ah, when we are eating them, we feel like it's Boga, hallelujah. Hmm? And you see the grace of a tiger, the grace of a cobra, and you see the, the size and growl of a grizzly bear, and you see how an elephant walks majestically with all that size, and a bison is fighting with another bison, and they smash each other so hard, and they are testing each other's strength. And how can all that come have come from nowhere? <laughs> it has to have come from God. But God saw that everyone will interpret what he sees as a revelation of the skies, the seas, and the green things, and the blue things, and the yellow things. They will interpret them each with their own confused interpretation. So what did he do? He brought a revelation that is written to ensure we have no mistakes around that. Somebody say amen. amen. Paul is saying, do not go beyond that which is written. Hallelujah. Stick within that boundary. The written word of God is the strongest revelation of who God is. 
It is the way we know that he loves us. It is the way we know that he has concerns about our living in sin. It is in that written word we see Proverbs 14, 34 that says, Righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. It is from there that we know God judges nations on the basis of righteousness. That he has a cup for each country. A cup for each country. That if when it is full of wickedness and righteousness is lacking, it pours forth like that. Like ugly wine that is making people drunk and pouring over. The wine of God's wrath pours over in that cup and he unleashes judgment on that nation. We would never, never have known that by looking at the sky. Or the river we had to read it somewhere in this book to know how god judges things to know how god has revealed himself through to mankind by becoming a man himself and christ coming in the flesh living among us in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and that word became flesh and dwelt among us he was the light of the world Oh, hallelujah. It is through that word that we know Christ is the Savior. It's through that word that I came to know that it is by my heart believing that Jesus is the Son of God and with my mouth confessing that he was raised from the dead that I am born again. 34 years this August, I'll be celebrating salvation that came from this Bible. Somebody say amen. Amen. There is a collaboration between the Holy Spirit and men that happened over a period of history that is so powerful. Some things were dictated. Some things were observation. And Moses could see what is happening with the Israelis and write it down. And observe when the Red Sea happened and he wrote it down. And he observed when there was food coming from heaven in the form of manna and he wrote it down. Observation, but inspired by God. Capture this, don't capture this. Observe this, don't bother with this. And he only wrote what's necessary for us to come to know who Jesus is. Somebody say amen. amen. So that Jesus comes and says, what they were eating in the, in the desert as manna, your fathers, I am the manna of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say harmony. Because there's one author, the Holy Ghost. He's the one who was behind when uh, um, King David was saying, I have been young and now I'm old. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Who helped him to observe like that? And write it down, the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. amen. So that when Pastor Steve Mwangi is going through a time when money is not there. And he's wondering how will things work. I would read that scripture and say based on what King David said. A man after God's own heart. I can trust that I will not be hungry in Jesus name. Somebody say amen. amen. The Holy Ghost inspired. The word is God breathed. He blew on men like that. And they got an understanding how to separate their thoughts, their intents, their motives, their attitudes, and put that aside and only say what God is saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Holy men, hmm? the Bible says, under the anointing and prophetic power of the Holy Spirit, wrote, <laughs> wrote, somebody say wrote. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 2 puts it like this. Let me put it. It's a beautiful thing that I wrote here. Hmm? And it's the same Corinthians we are studying. Hmm? First Corinthians 2.13. This is what we speak. Not in words taught us by human wisdom. <laughs> but in words taught by the Spirit. Capital S. Explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. Even the wording they used was not a language of this world, somebody. Amen. They were not copying from Kanye West. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. They were not copying from Nebuchadnezzar. They were not copying from the people that influenced the world at their day. The celebs of their day. They used words taught by the Holy Ghost. They used phrases, ideology that came from the Holy Ghost. Even their observations were written in a language that came from heaven. This is why we must not borrow from the world in our language. Our music must not be worldly. 
Our fashion must not be worldly. Our way of thinking must not be worldly. How we react and respond to issues of life, we must not be the same as the world. This is why even when it comes to death, look at how the Lord says about death. He says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And then it says, do you believe us? Don't grieve like the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is only asleep, absent in the body, present in the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything about us is different, brethren. We must never be of the world. We can be in the world, but not of the world. We must show like a sore thumb sticking out how we belong to a different kingdom. And this is why even how we approach elections is very different. Democratic elections did not come from a theocratic Bible. Wherefore, we have to understand how to approach democratic elections in our day by the Spirit of God giving us wisdom. Somebody say amen. Spirit explained spiritual realities with spirit taught words. Hallelujah. Inspiration is the miracle by which God records and explains his deeds and reveals his character and his thoughts to humanity. Inspiration is the miracle by which God records and explains his deeds and reveals his character and thoughts to humanity. You read it in the Bible where God had an encounter with Moses. And he says to him, I cannot allow you to see me face to face. You will not live. He says, but this is what I'll do. Because you have asked that I show you my glory. I will put you in the cleft of a rock. And then I will pass by. And I will cover you with my hand. And when I have passed by, I will release my hand. And you will be able to see my back parts only. Because he's saying, I have to honor your prayer, but I also at the same time, I don't want to kill you in the process. Hallelujah. And while he's walking by, he says, the Lord, the Lord, merciful and compassionate, who loves and forgives and also punishes the sins of the children to the third and to the fourth generation. What is he doing? He's revealing his character. His attributes. And Moses is writing as God is talking. Moses is writing as God is talking. And we come to understand God hates idolatry. That is a character of God. God hates adultery. That is a character of God. God hates any kind of selfish ambition. That is a character of God. These are attributes about our maker. And he wants us to fellowship on the basis of the fact that he is sovereign. He is supreme. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, with power that is unlimited. Hallelujah. Amen. We get to learn that through this book. Paul says, stay within the confines of the book and you will not go wrong. Your ambition will be tamed. Your desires to be successful in this life will be tamed. They will be limited. They will be humbled. <laughs> I like the way somebody was telling us, eh, I'm so much humbled. Hallelujah. <laughs> you have to remain so much humbled. <laughs> Another brother used to say, you have to humble. Yes, I tell you, you have to humble. <laughs> because in this word, we received it freely. You cannot take credit for anything. Glory to God. Even when a person's preaching is powerful, makes you weep, makes you cry, makes you want to fall down under the power of God. He is just a vessel speaking what has already been done by God. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 And so therefore, let me read using that orchestra illustration, the exact understanding of what the Holy Spirit did. This collaboration between the Holy Spirit and the authors of the Bible is appropriately illustrated by the cooperative efforts of a director and musicians in an orchestra. Each instrument reflecting the efforts and abilities of an individual musician provides a unique musical sound, yet the contribution of each instrument is valuable to the degree that it is guided and controlled by the conductor to blend with the other instruments. Under the conductor's skillful direction, the harmonious result is a delightful variety, yet unity of sound. 
like an orchestra conductor, the Holy Spirit controlled the 40 writers of scripture without suppressing their individuality. Mm. Hallelujah. Because each of us is unique, brethren. Each of us is unique. And that uniqueness adds to the value of the richness of the harmony. Hallelujah. Mm. It makes the music something that captivates, that soothes, that makes someone feel relaxed. That makes somebody feel emotional. That makes somebody feel happy and excited in a situation. Because uniqueness came together to form a harmony that ministers to people. Praise the Lord. This is what the Holy Spirit was seeking to do through this book. I personally believe that we have everything we need in this book. A king finds solutions here. A house girl find solutions here. An instrumentalist finds solutions here. A, a governor finds solutions here. A sailor finds solution here. God made sure any industry you are in, the Bible is relevant to you. Hallelujah. Yes. Any way of life you live and any race that you are, any language that you speak, the Lord has even touched people to do what is called Bible translation. So that languages of the world today, you can almost declare no language does not have the word of God in its language. Somebody say amen. God loves the human being. He made the human being. He wants the human being to come to him. He wants, it to, he wants that human being to do it by choice, not by manipulation, not by force, not by fear like Islam. Uh, makes its people so afraid until they just be a Muslim by fear and slimish our people and give birth to people born into Islam. They have no choice anymore about it. And this is wrong. The Bible tells us our God is a God of choice. This is why he made the statement in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever means if you decide, <laughs> believes in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We are going to stop there for today. And we are going to trust that God will speak to our hearts through this word and help us understand we must never go beyond the written word of God. Any notes that we teach, I have done a book on deliverance, 15 questions about your deliverance. If you look at that book, 70% of it is scriptures quoted. 30% <laughs> is the revelation the Holy Ghost gave me. Because the word is the truth. The word is the truth. My ideas could be wrong because I'm a fallen man, but the word is the truth, hallelujah. So a book that is well anchored in scripture is always a safe book to read. Somebody say amen. amen. And so therefore, let this be the strong lesson that we have learned here today. You have no reason to boast about anything because if you stay within the confines of the written word freely given to us, then there is no reason for you to have to boast. May the Lord help us all. May the Lord help us in our service. May the Lord help ministers of the gospel to have the right motive in what they are doing and stop stealing from other congregations deliberately. Allow people to make decisions for themselves as to whether they join your church or not. Don't push them. Don't coerce them. Don't manipulate people and make them feel afraid to leave you or to stay with you. Don't ever do that because then you are trying to take the place of the chief shepherd who is the head of the body of Christ, Jesus Christ, whom we shall submit to and give an account to. Learn from Apostle Paul how to, to put the right balance and stay within the confines of what is called the written word of God. Let's bow for a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless what we have learned today. Father, we humble ourselves before you this evening. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this Bible study on the book of Corinthians that is bringing up a lot of meat, a lot of solid food that will teach us about righteousness without which no man shall see God. We trust, oh my Father, that this video, as it goes beyond live stream now to those who will watch it later, 
And Lord, even those, oh God, who have heard the word, that we will all be convicted and, oh God, want to stay within the confines of God's word. And we pray that, Lord Jesus, our aim will not be to please men, but to please our God, whose praise is the highest praise, whose praise is the one that matters the most on judgment day, whose praise will mean eternal rewards, eternal life, and eternal living, that, Lord Jesus Christ, is a greater blessing than being alive in this earth that can only go to a maximum of 100 years. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, you shall bless all the hearers, all the watchers of this message, and help us all to seek to grow and mature deeper into the things of God and understanding of his ways. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us for this Bible study interactive today, uh, episode 10. It is my sincere prayer that God will help us all to be blessed uh, as we listen, as we study, as we countercheck the things that I have said from Scripture. And in case you feel like you are led to support our ministry, we would like to give you our ministry account number, which is uh, 247247. <clears throat> uh, that's the pay bill number. And then account number is 1280. 2802211 and also you can use our pay bill which is 4068211 and the account will be tithes offerings and alms or any other form of giving that you feel you want to give several of you have said what a blessing this teaching is to you and other things that we do on our YouTube channel on our Facebook page and our Instagram, the devotionals we provide, my daughter and I, every uh, so often. We trust God that we shall continue to enjoy the grace and strength of God to continue to be a blessing to you and to a blessing to the, to the whole of humanity, wherever he'll allow um, what we do to reach people. God bless you so much. We always value your presence, your comments, your feedback, your support, and your prayers too. And we believe God will reward you in due season, both in this life and in the life to come. So we say adios, amigos. Looking forward to see you next time. Ubarikiwe sana. Paka mshangai.